What's going on, Wolfpack? Welcome back to another episode of Market Watch Mondays. As always, I am your host at Mike Me Up with Two Ps, aka Mike, aka Michael. You know me, you know the drill on Twitter. If you're new to this channel, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the notifications so that you're aware of new videos coming out. Usually, I, I drop a video every single Monday, hence the name of the show, Market Watch Mondays. Um, and then also, again, just make sure you go and check out our Patreon page, right? If you guys are super into Dynasty, if you're a hardcore Dynasty gamer looking to up Gain a leg up on your league mates, you know, really get that strategy up and going. I am a strategy focused game theory and economics focused player. So, uh, you know, I, I, I basically preach those things. I teach those things to anyone in the Patreon. If you go on over there, you'll get all my ranks, which get updated on a monthly basis. It's combined dynasty ranks full on, uh, including Devi as well, if you subscribe for the alpha tier. And it's a it's a tier based ranking system that, that communicates across positions. It's a little bit different than other rankings you'll see out there. So you get that and then you'll just get access to Discord, which to me is the best dynasty community. I mean, there's a lot of other guys out there uh, probably smarter than me, uh, you know, that I've taken you know, the things that I've preached and, and things that I talk about on the channel and, and apply it in their own ways and come up with even better ways to use it. So honestly, if, if you are trying to get a leg up at Dynasty, this is the best community for you. So make sure you check it out. Patreon.com slash our pack. All right. Put a little, uh, you know, just put a little plug in there in the beginning. But uh, before we get into this week's video, I don't know how long this video is be. I'm actually, uh, I, I just got my booster shot and it's like kicking my ass. Like my have headache, my freaking body's aching, all that shit. I, I know I'm, I'm complaining like a little bee, but still had to come on here and record the episode because I think there's a really important topic that I wanted to cover today. So I'm here uh, for y'all. I mean, for my favorite show, I uh, can't, can't miss the recording for anything, even even for uh, sickness. So enough of that. Let's hit the intro so we can get on to the main content at hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so this week's episode, I want to cover one topic and one topic, one topic only, and it is liquidity, right? Liquidity is important in real life. It's important in investing. It's important everywhere because the more liquidity you have, the more flexibility you have to take advantage of opportunities. And, you know, one thing uh, that I constantly preach on this channel and, and someone that I quote nonstop is Bruce Lee, who's a legend, uh, absolute fucking legend, the king himself and my hero. So he says, be water, right? And I say that all the time. What does that mean? Right? What does it mean to be water? It means to stay flexible, as flexible as you can be. And that to me is the key key to success in any dynasty format, any league you play is to stay flexible and be able to adapt, right? Now that sounds fancy, right? But how do we actually do that in practice? And I preach a lot of things, you know, if you're on my channel and you've seen some of my prior videos, I talk a lot about how to be flexible, how to stay liquid, right? The number one thing of, uh, when it comes to liquidity is, is draft picks, right? And draft picks is always a, co uh, a topic of discussion, right? Everyone has their own opinions. You know, everyone, you have most people, a lot of people that say, Hey, draft picks are undervalued. A lot of people say draft picks are overvalued when in, re in reality, like how draft picks are, it really comes down to your league, right? If you're in a league with one of the patrons, right, that that kind of follow uh, follow the things, the principles that I preach all the time, then obviously, you know, rookie picks probably aren't going to be, you know, uh, over uh, uh, undervalued because everyone's going to value them. Everyone's going to want them because that's the thing that I preach. But if you're in a more traditional home league where people don't really understand the value of rookie picks and, and, and the properties that they come with, uh, then it's going to be overvalued, but that's not what the most important thing is, right? The, the thing I want to talk about today is like certain features, I think, of, of rookie picks that, that aren't really properly accounted for in the value, right? When, when a lot of people say rookie picks are overvalued, what do they say, right? They say, oh, you know, first round picks only have a 50% hit rate, right? You know, you, you can only, a bunch of rookies bust, right? And not, not everyone's good at evaluations, right? Look, look at all the busts that got picked. Look at Manikil Harry, look at... Jalen Rager, right? We're not good at evaluating prospects. You're much better off getting a sure thing in a veteran, right? That's usually the spiel that you hear, right? But here's the problem with that type of approach and that type of mentality, right? You're not really recognizing the ancillary benefits of a rookie pick. And the primary benefit of a rookie pick, aside from security, uh, the fact that the value of a rookie pick typically always increases between now and the draft, but the other most important factor is liquidity, right? When you hold a player, right? When you hold a player, unless it's like a Patrick Mahomes, like a top 10, top 20, top 25 dynasty asset, right? Even, even when it is then, like only a certain subset of people in your league are going to usually want that, right? Like, you know, even, even someone as good as like a Christian McCaffrey, right? Who in my eyes is still the dynasty running back one. I know it's not a popular opinion, but just... You know, in my opinion, his impact and what he's able to do on the field, 
still makes them the running back one. But not everyone's going to want that. If you're a rebuilding team, right, you're not going to want Christian McCaffrey, right? Only the top-end contenders that, that need running backs are going to want Christian McCaffrey. Similarly, if you look at, like, a Devontae Adams, right, he's a very good player, one of the best wide receivers in the league, one of the most high-impact wide receivers in terms of uh, win, wins uh, above replacement added. He's going to be, you know, in high demand, but also only for a contender. Same thing with Cooper Cup, right, who's having a historic, historic season, just blowing all things out of the water, just having a monster season, Cooper Cup. But he's still not going to be as liquid as future picks because at the end of the day, in Dynasty, the only way to replenish your squad and to extend the life uh, lifetime value of your squad is through rookie picks. So there will always be more demand for rookie picks. Now, league to league, demand might be a little bit different, right? But you're going to be going into a seller's market, right? When it comes to draft time, there's always going to be guys that want it. And it doesn't matter who you are. You will always get caught up with draft type. I do myself, everyone that I know, all the best analysts that I play with, like they all get caught up in the draft type a little bit. So, so that's one of the ancillary benefits of a rookie draft pick is liquidity. Now there's also other various, various things like, you know, value storage. To me, like you think about, uh, you think about, rookie picks as if they are um a token shout out to at cooper underscore dff on twitter he said this and i, and I really liked it too the way he put it and i'm, I'm like mad that it didn't come to me because i'm i'm like you know investing in so much like crypto and nfts and all this stuff but it, it really is like a rookie pick people think about that rookie pick as like a few as like a as a pick they're gonna make right and, and that's all fine and dandy but really how you should be thinking about rookie picks is is basically a token it's like it's like a bitcoin it's like a like a like an ethereum right that you can redeem later on for an nft of your choosing or you know any player of your choosing but that token itself has a lot of value because it has liquidity that i talked about it has the value stores that i talked about it has the security that i talked about and above all else it also has the hidden benefits of not contributing points to your roster. So if you're in a tanking or rebuilding mood, right, you want to keep points off your roster so you can get a better draft pick for yourself. And then also it doesn't take up a roster slot. So there's so many various benefits to a rookie pick. That's why that's why it makes it the holy grail, right? So whether or not you think rookie picks are undervalued or overvalued, we can argue until we're all blue in the face. But the reality is... It is the most liquid currency that you have in Dynasty. That's why it's so important. And I always preach the Iron Bank, the Iron Bank, even on contending teams, even on rebuilding teams, it doesn't matter. I'm always trying to replenish my Iron Bank because that is the best form of liquidity that I have for my team, right? And successful Dynasty teams, you have to have liquidity because liquidity is one-to-one -one with flexibility. When you have an injury, right, you can take some of your liquidity and 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 swap that in for value and production, right? There's, if you think about the pillars of, of dynasty, to me, the three major ones are like, one is production, right? That's how you win, right? Two is value. And then three to me is like flexibility and liquidity. And I've always said that that is one of the most important factors, right? And that's how I play the game. Now, I know others that, that don't value the same way and, and that's totally fine, but let me explain to you why I value like liquidity so much. Like if you're a contender, even if you're a contender, I like having draft picks on my team because I know that at some point there's going to be really valuable production out there on teams that aren't, that are no longer contending, right? And the ones that have the liquidity are the ones that are going to be able to capture that market at a cheaper price. Because when people are trying to unload players, they're looking for draft picks, right? They're not necessarily looking for other players. Yes, they'll look to get younger and all that stuff. But, you know, people aren't always willing to trade away young talent because it's so so rare to come by, right? And, and, it, and it is so valued. So for, for me, like having the liquidity, having the flexibility on my team allows me to jump on those situations regardless of whether I'm contending or not, right? And if I think about all of my dynasty teams, right? I'm always thinking about like my liquidity pool, right? And how liquid my team is, right? And and some teams I have are not very liquid. And some of those teams have gone like all the way the fuck in because sometimes you play in a league and everyone's like very like, they're very much like me where they're like totally in or totally out, right? Not all leagues are like that, but I do get into some leagues like that. And in those leagues, if I want to win, I kind of do got to push in, right? But even as contenders, I'm okay with trading out production for liquidity right i'm always trying to gather more liquidity because there's there's really no harm the only good can come from acquiring liquidity on your teams right and how do i do that throughout the off season throughout the year is understanding the what i call the liquidity window of your players right now if you look at your team 
you can break down your liquidity windows of your players, right? You know, young quarterbacks, their liquidity windows open all year. What I mean by that, you can trade a, a Kyler Murray, a Justin Herbert, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, like the top end quarterbacks that have my ranks, top five quarterbacks. You can trade them any time in the year. There will always be a large amount of demand for them because it's very hard to find elite quarterbacks and it's very hard to find young elite quarterbacks, specifically in Superflex where you need them, right? So aside from draft picks, the most liquid currency is those elite, elite quarterbacks, right? And that's open all year round. So you never really have to worry about dumping a, a quarterback in that sense, right? But then, you know, you move down a little bit, right? And if you look at my ranks in the first round, I have Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley, you know, ranked number six, number seven. Might not be a popular opinion, but I think they're still the two best fantasy running backs when healthy. Granted, they've been injured and all that stuff, but there isn't much separating them and my next two guys was Jonathan Taylor and DeAndre Swift, right? But in my rankings there, I recognize that there are times where I'm definitely going to want to trade off Jonathan Taylor and DeAndre Swift for Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley. Even though I have Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley ranked higher, I recognize that Jonathan Taylor and DeAndre Swift carry a lot more liquidity because they're only they're 22 years old, right? They're very, very young running backs. They're only ha ha not even halfway through their rookie contracts yet. And those young stud running backs, to me, are the next most liquid currency in Dynasty, right? Outside of the elite quarterbacks, the next most liquid currency are those young running backs, right? Now, some people will say it's wide receiver, and that might be true, you know, if you want to play value. But if, if, you, are, if you are trying to capitalize in season on the ability to win, Jonathan Taylor is a very, very easy player to trade, right? He's going to be a lot easier than even some of these wide receivers, in my opinion. Um, even though, you know, Jamar Chase is, 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 you know, elevating himself to a top five dynasty asset, according to Keep Trade Cut, I, I just... I haven't seen that type of demand, right, for, for Jamar Chase versus Jonathan Taylor. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's close enough. So you have young running backs that are also super liquid, right? And then you have, but those aging quarterbacks, so Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley, their liquidity window is a lot shorter, right? It's a lot smaller. It's really going to be towards the end of the year. So during the playoffs, during the playoffs, or as you get close to the playoffs, if Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley do come back healthy, that's your liquidity window. That's going to be the prime time to trade away those assets. So if you're on a team that isn't contending, don't trade them away now, right? Understand where your liquidity window is and where you can capitalize on the most value. And that's not just for them. It's for, for all like aged running backs and really aging veterans, even on the wide receiver end. So guys like Devontae Adams, who I said, uh, you know, a long time ago was, was a prime sell high candidate coming off that career year, right? We don't know what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers. We don't know what's going to happen with his contract. He's going to be an elite player no matter what and land where he is, but he's hitting that value cliff already. He's 28 years old, right? Uh, no matter what he does from now on, he's not going to... He's not going to go up in value from from where he's at. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, the, the only thing, even if you would have to have, like, basically a Cooper Cup season or a, a Devontae Adams, like, you know, 2020 season to really even, like, hold that value and not lose a little bit. If he drops even, like, the slightest in production, he's going to tumble, just like just like DeAndre Hopkins did. Like, it's, it's a tale as old as time, right? So with players like that, you need to understand – the liquidity window is very, very short, right? So if you are a team that is not a contender, you need to look to trade those players. And similarly, like Cooper Cup, like Cooper Cup, you know, people, people are, are usually very, you know, against those that speak out about, you know, trading high on a player that that's having a career year. And look, if you're, if you're a contender, top end contender and Cooper Cup is your, is your wide receiver. And you know, he, he's the guy that's getting it done for you. I understand not wanting to trade him and, and you want to keep him on your team and you're a contender. That's all fine and dandy. But for me, I'm still willing to explore that because it all comes back to liquidity, right? I'm trying to, I'm trying to trade off production for liquidity when i can without losing too much on the production end. so if i can trade a you know if i can trade a cooper cup for you know maybe a debo samuel maybe a you know uh michael pittman who i've become really high on as of late um if i can trade down and get some more liquidity in the form of either other young players or a you know or a draft or draft picks i'm willing to explore that as long as this is where you know, taking into account your opponents probably comes into play. Right? I'm not going to trade them to my top contender, like my top opponent. But if someone in my league that's more of like a middling, middling squad, right, that that thinks they can contend, right, they're they're what I would call a pretender. They come to me and ask for Cooper Cup, and and they have draft picks. I'm more than willing to trade out a Cooper Cup, trade out of Devonta Adams to get that capital, and you know, replace replenish a bit at wide receiver. You know, by trading down a couple of tiers. You know, whether that's Debo Samuel, whether that's you know Terry McLaurin, whether that's Chris Godwin, for whatever reason, people are a bit lower on him than, than, you know, than what we had thought. Like 
yes, I lose, you know, that 15%, 20% edge or whatever. But this is the most liquid window for veterans like that, for veterans like Cooper Cup, like Devontae Adams, like Saquon Barkley, like C CMC, right? Their window of their sell window, their liquidity window is really constrained to the time that people are willing to go after it most. And that's during the season, right? That's that's especially between now and the championship week, because this is when usually the top contenders in your league are going to get into an arms race, right? They're going to start trading off assets, selling off stuff to try and acquire production. But for me, right, I don't want to do that prematurely. And this is a change I've made in, in my game, right? Before, I used to think that prepaying for like insurance and prepaying for a lot of depth was like the smart move uh, with my draft picks. But now I, I've like held back because and it comes back to the liquidity and flexibility. I feel like I don't need to give up that flexibility. I don't need to give up that liquidity until it's time to make that move, right? Because the worst thing you can do is like prepay for a bunch of liquidity and then all your players stay healthy. And then next thing you know, like you just wasted, you just traded like a bunch of picks at discount value for no reason. And, and that really hurts you and hinders your long-term growth and hinders your ability to extend your liquidity window beyond the season. So I've, I've changed a lot to the point where, you know, I'm always willing to trade players, even as a contender, right? I'm willing to flex a bit and trade out of a Devontae Adams and, uh, you know, Mike Evans, another great example, or a, an AJ Brown, even, or, or Tyreek Hill, even, right? These are, these are top end guys I'm willing to trade out on in order to get some liquidity back. So for me, it's about managing that, liquid, that liquidity window. And one thing that I see people do very often uh, when they are top contenders is trade for temporary assets with very, very small liquidity windows, right? And that's risky. That's risky because you may be thinking like, yeah, I'm trading to like secure my championship, but you never know what's going to happen in the championship, right? There's there's so much variance week to week. Like some of my best squads, like my, one of my best squads, bet signing squads ever, like it's finished second place three years in a row, right? And that's that's unlucky, but that's also variance, right? That can that can happen to anyone. So I see a lot of people trading for temporary assets and giving up future first round picks. That you know, assuming they're late, right? Which is the number one mistake people make. Assuming they're late, and then, you know, trading for temporary guys that don't hold value, right? I think that middle ground is very dangerous, right? You either pay really cheap for really shitty assets you can plug in and rent, like don't go higher than you know second round pick, or you know, hopefully not even a th not even like a second round pick, maybe like a late second or like you know, use your second round pick to buy a shitty player plus a third round pick or something like that, right? You either go really, really cheap or you pay up a bit using your picks and get a player that actually has like long-term value. The worst thing I see people do is give up their first or give up multiple seconds for like rentals, right? You give up guys for like Cordero Patterson, right? Who, who, yeah, he might be good, right? But you don't want to give up like multiple second round picks for him because that's just, that's just like, if you're always doing that year after year, you're really not only just burning value on your team, but you're burning a ton of liquidity. You're, burn, you're burning all the flexibility that you have. And every year you're gonna have to try and get those guys back. And you're gonna get into the cycle where you, you know, you, you pay, you overpay for an asset with a very, very liquid asset, right? You overpay for a player, like an aging vet for with very, very liquid capital, which is even second round picks are very, very liquid. Right. And then next year that player is basically useless. So then what do you do? You have to start using first round picks and then you, you start digging yourself in this hole and it becomes very, very hard to come out of. Right. So, so really at the end of the day, like that's why I hate trading up, trading away my flexibility and my liquidity in dynasty leagues when I don't need to anymore. Right. And, and that's, a, that's a pivot that I've made. Right. If you go way back a couple of years in the channel, I used to always say like, Hey, make sure you guys pre prepay for insurance and all that. And that's fine. But I, I kind of changed my stance to that. I, I'd much rather hold those, uh, those first round picks so that I have that liquidity. So that when, when shit does hit the fan, I can acquire someone with like long, real long-term value and not these temporary guys, right? If you're paying for temporary guys, just don't overpay, right? And, and guys that really come to mind is Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette is a great target for a contending team, right? But I would not be paying like you should not be paying like a first round pick for Leonard Fournette, even though he, he's putting up pretty, pretty damn good running back production. There's a chance that he has long-term value because Rojo is probably gone next year. Maybe he, he becomes that workhorse uh, bell cow back again. But like, I just don't, I hate burning that liquidity for him because if you, if you trade for Leonard Fournette, right. With the first round pick, chances of you ever recouping that value is, is like slim to none. So if you do that, you gotta make sure one, you really need him, right? You really need him. And two, I would try and get something back. So Leonard Fournette for me is a great target to get as a contender in dynasty teams, but you just got to make sure you know what you're paying for him, right? Instead of paying for, if you're going to use a first round pick to let, pay for Leonard Fournette, right? I would much rather, you know, pay up a bit, you know, pay like a first or a couple firsts even for, 
someone like a you know Austin Eckler or or you know maybe like a you know Nick Chubb a first plus for like Nick Chubb right these are guys that yeah they, they might not be um they, they might not be as cheap but I'd much rather pay up a tier to get someone that I think has more long term value so so that's really what it comes down to and then if I were to think about liquidity right I talked about quarterbacks right young elite quarterbacks aside from it, the tier of ranks is this it's, it's draft picks first round rookie picks right now specifically 2023 first round picks but also 2022 first round picks are still good so first round rookie picks that's tier one right tier two is quarterbacks you, you could argue that the quarterbacks right now and and the rookie picks are probably on the same tier because to get those elite quarterbacks you have to like really really overpay uh, just because of the scarcity value and the impact they have on the game. It's come up, become a very, very pass happy league. And, you know, people love going for like longevity and all that stuff. So I would say maybe you can make the case that first round picks and, you know, elite, elite quarterbacks are in that first tier, right? And then below that, you have like the young stud running backs, right? The Jonathan Taylors, DeAndre Swift, Najee Harris, right? Those are guys that are in that tier. And then, you know, I think the wide receivers are below them. But if you want to make the case that wide receivers are the same, that's fine too. You have the Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, DK Metcalf, Adrian Brown. So those really elite young wide receivers, Chris Godwin, maybe CeeDee Lamb, right? Those are guys that you would put in there. So those, to me, are the most liquid dynasty assets, right? And if you look at my most stud, like stacked dynasty teams that are contenders as well, I stockpile like these types of players because I, I want to be liquid, but I also have like the draft picks on the back end. So that's how I, that's how I really control and dominate those leagues is I control all the liquidity. So I get to determine what the most liquid assets are worth. I get to determine how much things are, how much things are selling for. And I try, I basically get to, you know, basically set the market. Right. And I'd say Kyle Pitts is probably in there with that young wide receiver group in terms of the most liquid players available. Right. So, but then after that, that's where the tricky stuff comes in, right? Like, because after that, you get into the mix of veterans versus production versus liquidity versus, you know, versus youth and all that stuff. And you have like the Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley's, right? Not very liquid, but high impact, high win percentage players. And you can charge a maximum price for them if you sell them at the right time, right? And at the right time is between now and the end of the season. Hopefully, once they come back and they have put a couple games together, once people see their plan to have a couple games, that's when you're able to capitalize. Same thing with... Devontae Adams, right? You have Stephon Diggs, Cooper Cup, like those veteran type players that only really have liquidity at this time in the year. Because if you think, if you jump out a few months from now, right? If you look at the draft later on, you know, in the off season, there's not much liquidity for old players. Like if you're a 28 year old wide receiver, you're 25, 26 year old running back, there's not going to be much of an incentive to trade for you because you, people know that draft picks are going to be going up. Everyone's going to be chasing the youth at that time. So it's not really going to be about trying to trade those players in the offseason. So your window to sell, if if you want to sell, is really now, right? And then conversely, once the draft comes around, you can then use your rookie draft picks to trade for veterans during the draft when the veterans are the least valued and the draft picks are the most valued. And that's, what, that's the advantage of having liquidity, right? The liquidity is that you. it's easy to go one way, but it's not easy to go back. It's kind of like a, you know, if you think about it, it's kind of like a filter, if you have like a filter, right, it's really easy to filter draft picks through and land veterans, but it's, it's not it's not so easy to kind of like go back and reverse the other way. So that's how I think about it in terms of how, what we do now versus what we do later, right? So those are just kind of like a breakdown of like my upper echelon of dynasty players, right? And then you also have like older quarterbacks as well, right? Like Russell Wilson, Matt Ryan, like Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford. Like as good of a season as Matthew Stafford is having now, his liquidity window is also going to be pretty damn small, right? Like even with Russell Wilson, like these are both elite players, but in the off season, people are just not willing to pay for aging veterans very much at all. So, you know, if, if you are not on a contending team, it, it, it's probably in your best interest to trade away a player like like a Matthew Stafford in the peak while he's putting up monster touchdowns, while he has Cooper Cup in the season, while people are chasing chasing championships, because that is a time to capitalize, right? When other people are willing to give up their liquidity, right? That's the cheapest time to acquire liquidity because in the off season, it's not going to be that cheap. It's going to be much, much more expensive. It's going to be much, much more harder to get in the off season. So you so even on contending teams, you should always be looking to leverage that. And you know, I always talk about winning championships matter more than anything else. And people might think like, well, if you do that, don't you hurt your chance of winning a championship? Maybe a little bit, but I just feel like we don't have enough confidence to say like, oh, if I trade away Devonte Adams and I trade him for, 
you know, a Michael Pittman plus a first round pick plus a second round pick or something like that. Like, is that really going to damage my chances that much? Right. People are very confident in who the top players are. I'm not so confident. So I'm willing to trade off that variance, trade off that unknown to get a little bit more security. In the off chance that I'm wrong, I still have that first round pick and I can still hit. Right. And again, this is the only time where you kind of consider who you're trading with. Right. If I'm trading these types of assets, I'm not really looking to trade with my top competitors, right? A guy that has a ton of depth and is also scoring a ton of points, right? I'm not looking to do that. I'm looking to trade for that middle tier, those guys that can maybe sneak into the playoffs. And look, maybe it burns you, right? Maybe they sneak in the playoffs, maybe they beat you, but that's that that's like the lower probability. And more often than not, those guys think this one piece is going to change their game and really in reality it's not going to and you basically you took a little bit of a production hit you gain a ton of security you gain a ton of liquidity going into next season and on contending teams i'm also looking to dump like temporary assets right like guys that i don't think will hold value long term you know guys like you know zach moss right guys like um uh th those types of like even, even like a Darrell henderson who has a lot of risks right like these are guys that i'm looking to basically get out of at the peak value in their liquidity window and charge the maximum price like leonard Fournette, like i said you know he's a great target for contenders but he could also be a great sell candidate because you can get something more long term from him and if you're a true contender right if you're like a top end elite contender that i'm talking about leonard Fournette is probably not gonna like change your game that much because you probably have enough depth you might lose a load of production for sure but you probably have enough depth to actually come back from that and then guys like Chase Edmonds, right? Guys like, well, Chris Carson's injured, so you can't really do much with him now. But like Tony Pollard, these are guys, Melvin Gordon. Like, I feel like these are all guys that have that have value now, right? And they're they're putting up production. And in the season, people are seeing them put up points and they're willing to pay for that, right? Front, you know, they're front of mind, right? And when they're front of mind, people are willing to pay the piper. But come the off season, like, it doesn't matter what Leonard Fournette does. Like, it doesn't matter what Melvin Gordon does in season. Even if they finish as like, you know, high, uh, like, like low end RB ones or whatever, I guarantee you the value is going to tank for them. And it's going to be very, very hard to sell them because there's going to be so much uncertainty. People are going to speculate about which running backs going to get drafted, which running backs coming in and take up their volume. So again, it's all about capitalizing on that liquidity window. And that that's really the message I want to, I want to draw home. So I want you guys to go out there, right? Look at your dynasty teams and be, be truthful to yourself. One, am I a contender? Am I not a contender? And two, break your players down into like, into different tiers. That I talk about the tiers of liquidity, right? How liquid are they? How short, how long is your liquidity window? And if you are finding yourself, you have a couple teams that are, that are not contenders, even the teams that are contenders that can afford to lose some depth without severely crippling your team. Think about dumping those guys with short liquidity windows because what that's going to do is going to retain value in your team and it's going to extend the liquidity window so that if you need to go back into production and trade off some liquidity to go back into production, you can do it very easily and not at a discount, right? Because by that time, it's going to be a seller's market for draft picks and a buyer's market for, you know, for veterans. So it's just it's just something to consider right it's to remain flexible i preach it all the time that's what you need to do and these are the kind of the steps and the thought processes you have to go through in order to get there right so extend 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 your liquidity always be expanding that liquidity pool always be trying to you know not just get younger because that's you know people think about liquidity and youth but just get into the asset tiers and the things that people want things that are in high demand and get out of the ones that are in low demand in the off season now because you're not going to be able to do it in the off season. You're not going to be do it when the draft season comes around. Like you're not going to be able to trade a Leonard Fournette for a first round pick when the draft season comes around, right? No matter how good Leonard Fournette does for the rest of the year, it's just not going to happen, right? So it's good to get ahead of the curve. It's good to get ahead of the game right now in order to set yourself up for success, right? Building value builds championships, right? Over time, the more value you accumulate, the better your odds of winning a championship. It doesn't secure your championship because again, this is a very luck based high variance game. But it certainly improves your chances. And that's really my approach, right? And people focus on value. I focus on value and liquidity, right? Liquidity is a term that I think not very many people fully grasp, right? But it's a very, very important and arguably just as important as value. Like, how do you realize value without liquidity, right? A good example of this, if you know, like NFT market, right? If you're in an NFT, you know, people, you know, people are listing NFTs, you know, they lift it, list it for like 30 Ethereum, right? But there's no there's no sales right if there's no liquidity that value is just it's a, it's a fugazi right it's it's not real it's not a real number unless there's liquidity and there's demand and there's people consistently buying that product 
you do not have the liquidity to support the value. So to me, liquidity and value really go hand in hand. And, you know, it's not not necessarily pre all the time. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you guys did, again, make sure you head on to the bottom. Click the subscribe button. Click the thumbs up and uh, turn on notifications so you can catch future videos with me. Uh, follow me at Mike Me Up with two Ps on Twitter. I'm always on there uh, shooting the shit, shit posting, meme posting, talking football, you know, whatever. The whole nine yards. Uh, and then lastly... Don't forget to hop on to the Patreon, the patreon.com slash hour pack. That's patreon.com slash hour pack for the most high packed velocity of dynasty strategy that you're going to be able to get on the market. Uh, it's, it's a cool group, cool squad, cool community that I'm building. Uh, not I'm building, sorry, that we're building, you know, a lot of contributions from the community members as well. Uh, they share a lot of cool content out there. So make sure uh, you guys go and check that out. And I'm going to be scoping out the scene, right? I think I want to add uh, some some more talent to, to the Dynasty team, you know, to make video content. You know, as much as I love creating videos, like I just don't want to, I'm not someone that's going to be putting out like videos every single day, like full time because I would lose my love for it. And personally, like, I don't like putting out shit content. And if I did that, I feel like I'd put out a lot of shitty content. So for me, like, that's why I focus on this one, like massive, like marquee video every single week that I put the research in that I put the thought behind that to actually present to you guys. But I'm going to be looking for guys, man. If you guys are interested uh, making video content, if you're in the Patreon, hop in the Patreon, just tell me, or if you're in the YouTube comments, even, uh, you know, give me a shout. And I'm going to be looking to hopefully add some, some folks to the team, expand the BDG roster, expand the dynasty roster, the video content creation roster, uh, to help hopefully put out more content, right? Other viewpoints, not just mine, other guys that contradict me or have other smart views and other things to learn from, I think it's gonna be pretty exciting. So if you guys are interested in that, you know, hop on the Patreon and, and, and message me or just, you know, again, DM me, uh, on Twitter or just hop in the comments and let me know. And I'll be checking those uh, as they're getting posted. All right. And then lastly, uh, don't forget about the partnership with Dynasty Nerds. Uh, so we started that. We're Dynasty Nerds affiliates. They're uh, their tools and their subscriptions. So, you know, I'm a big fan of Dynasty Nerds. I've been using them and been with them. They were the first ones to give me the opportunity to actually make make content from the fantasy football space. But I've been using their tools, specifically their Dynasty GM tool, which I think is really, really cool. One of the best things on the market. It helps aggregate all of your uh, all of your leagues together, shows you the value of your team, like how you rank relative to other people. So so for those of you out there that, that are have a tough time determining whether you're a true contender or not, like this is a good tool to help you know, to help you gauge the landscape and really know where you fall within all your leagues, right? And, and then obviously you can get the nerd herb subscription. So, you know, they have, you know, they have a lot of the stuff out there. They have trade tools and all that stuff, um, for you guys out there as well. And, uh, if you go there and use promo code Wolfpack, uh, that's promo code Wolfpack or, uh, use the link below. Some people said the link isn't working, but make sure you get the discount. So you get 20% off. If you go through uh, promo code Wolfpack on the dynasty nerds website, uh, to make sure you guys get that discount for a pretty cool product, man. It's one of the, one of the coolest teams out there. Big fan of rich, big fan of, uh, Jared and Garrett and, and Matt and all those guys over there. A lot of respect for them. So, uh, make sure you guys check that out, uh, if you want. And, um, again, yeah, if you're trying to up your dynasty game, man, there's a lot of tools out there. There's a lot of communities out there. I still think we're the best wolf packs to so come on in and join us and let me prove that to you. Uh, but there's a lot of other good guys out there too. So make sure you scope out the scene and do your own research and, and, you know, follow and follow the content that, 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 you know, that really like resonates with you, right? That that's what it comes down to. There's a lot of content out there. It's very saturated and it's not just about who puts the best data, who puts the best stuff out there. It's like, who do you trust? Who do you gel with? And that's what it comes down to. All right. That's all I got for you guys this week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed until next time. Peace.